Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we'll be looking at Black Powder Epic Battles, uh, the Waterloo Campaign. This is by Warlord Games and in particular we're looking at the Bonaparte's French Army Starter Set. So this is in the 13.5 millimeter scale, a new fancy scale for the game. And what I wanted to show, uh, what you get for $145 in the box. So the, this army is sitting on two 11 inch by 11 inch boards. So the frontage you see being taken up is 22 inches by 11. So you get an idea of the area of coverage you have uh, from the starter set. You have 10 battalions of infantry, three batteries of artillery to support that infantry, then we have a light cavalry brigade going down here, a heavy cavalry brigade, um, one battalion of um, artillery to support each one of those brigades. Um, I put together uh, six uh, commanders here. Um, there's more in the set, and I could actually make these, give a couple of these battalions more companies to them. Um, but then it wouldn't fit on here. So you actually get um, over a thousand miniatures on here and you get more than what you need um, put together here. Uh, I should say about the infantry battalions here is most in the game, most infantry sit on four bases. Um, this fifth base right here is when you deploy some of your soldiers into um, skirmishers. So I have those associated. Um, but if you want to run a heavy battalion of five bases, you'll need two skirmisher bases. The sprues can support that easily. And over here, we have DeCoster's house. So this is Sarissa Precision, designed for the um, uh, Waterloo campaign. And this is actually very easy to put together, and I made it so the roof would come off. And um, just the way they do their laser cutting, it's uh, pretty ready to go. A very quick build, I was surprised. And also coming in the set, uh, you have the flags to um, put on your uh, banner bearers. You have the rule book, and you get some of the cheap little dice here. So overall, uh, see a thousand miniatures for one hundred forty-five dollars. Uh, that's a pretty good bath uh, value there. And looking at the amount of coverage here, uh, you can see that it might not fit into your idea of a 6x4 full battle, battle for Waterloo. Um, this set is mostly designed um, to capture certain vignettes um, from the battle. So uh, different sections of the line is what you're trying to recreate here. And even then you can expand onto it. Um, but it's a good starter set because you're going to spend a lot of time painting these guys just from the get-go, so don't overwhelm your set. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go and show you what it's like to unbox the set, and then we'll go through each frame, the infantry, the light cavalry, and the heavy cavalry. So this is what the box looks like when you just get it in. And so everything arrived through the mail just fine. Let's get this shrink wrap off. There we go. A wise guy, huh? Okay. There we go. Okay. So I get this box top off. Oh. We have stacks of blue. So the British were in red. These guys are in blue, naturally. So you can get playing right off the bat here. So we got three French light cavalry sprues. Yeah. Okay. And now let's. See how many infantry sprues. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-
ten of those, and ah, the cavalry, or the heavy cavalry on the bottom. So like we saw, let's get this out of the way so you can see it. So, with the light cavalry sprue, just as on the British set, um, the artillerists aren't close together, only one guy's touching the wheel. So on the heavy cavalry set, the two guys are touching the wheel. That's how you know which one, which sprue's which. But three light cavalry, three heavy cavalry, ten frames of infantry, just like the British set. And let's see here, we've got our, yeah, this also came in the British set. So we've got our Sarissa Precision building here. So now I'll have two buildings. Since I bought both. All right, so here's the Waterloo campaign book. Very well protected. So I'll stop from getting nicks. Oh, the bases there. So artillery, uh, infantry, cavalry, individual commander bases. And so and there's our painting instructions and modeling instructions. Ah. Like Grenadier, I like I like this Grenadiers, Premier, Deuxième, Troisième, Quatrième, Voltigère, and here's our flags for the French. Okay, there's colors. And let's see who we have to thank for this. Marilla, good job, Marilla. Everything seemed to come as it was meant. And there's my cheap dice. Plenty of bags of these. So everything came as it should have. Happy about that, it's not always the case, but it worked out this time. With everything unboxed, I wanna start by going over frame by frame. Uh, so we're gonna start with the French infantry frame here. That's some other models I'm working on. So I've gone through these frames. So I wanna orient it. We have, every frame has a brigadier. So this is our French brigadier here. And he's surrounded by the standard uh, artillery piece, so one per frame. Over here, you're going to have your voltigeurs, so your skirmishers. Now, you'll see here, we have four ranks of two of line infantry. All right, with the general on the top left, you'll notice that this row right here, the guys on the left these two rows, their plumes are higher um, on their shakos, okay? Then right here, we have the leader sprue, um, and this other sprue of regular infantry. Then here, these guys are upside down, but you'll notice the guys on the right, so I'll turn this around, the guys on the right, their plumes are higher. So these guys, once again, the people on the left, plumes are higher. People on the right, plumes are higher. So what this allows you to do is actually kind of frame it and say, okay, the people with the plumes on the right that are higher, these will be your voltigers because the, um, the plumes change colors for the different companies. So that's how they did it. And so you can see the skirmishers here have the higher plumes. So when you play the game and you do an infantry battalion, the idea is that, let's get a frame here and I'll show you. So for every one of these frames, you'll get one of these. These four right here correspond to each rank here. This right here, um, if you're doing a standard infantry battalion for Waterloo, you get four bases. And if you want to do, send out your voltigers to do skirmishes, you remove one base and you put in your base of skirmishers. So the idea is these eight models of the voltigers will go as many as you want on one base. You can have two bases of skirmishers, but that's if you're running a larger battalion and you'd have a fifth um, base. So you'd remove two and then put two bases of um, rifles, skirmishers in there, the voltigers, okay? So that's why, that that's a good way to frame these guys is if your rank has tall plumes on the leftmost guy, that's gonna be your grenadiers, your elite, and if the 
guys uh, on the right have the tall plumes, those are going to be your Voltigers or your Skirmishers. So just a way to think about this frame. Um, you could mix and match their 13.5 millimeter who's going to get close. But now let's look at the French uh, Light Brigade. So this is the French Light Cavalry Brigade here. All right. So um, there's no general. The generals come on the infantry frame. So um, that brigadier you can use for the cavalry guys. Now, upper left corner, once again, we have the uh, artillery piece. This will be the uh, cavalry artillery piece. And the way you look at these guys is a, um, break them up into bits here. So over on the left here are the uh, lancers. You can tell by the distinctive hat and they carry lances. All right, so you're gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six of those guys and a commander with the sword. And he's got the same hat. Now I'm going to turn this around so I can show this. All right, so then there are um, hussars. Now the way you tell the hussars from the um, chasseurs de chevalier um, is the hussars all have their swords pointed forward here, and they have an extra fancy frilly piece on their left shoulder there. And their commander has what you think of as the Hastar hat. Then right, these six right here and this guy um, are the uh, third option, the Chevaliers, uh, Chasseurs of Chevalier. Okay, now you also have guidons here, you got two of them. So the idea is you can take one of these guys that doesn't have his sword touching on the mount. Um, and that normally it's the commander, what I've seen with the way Warlord do it. You cut off the right hand with the sword, and there's a little hand actually molded into these staffs, um, into the guidons, and you can glue that in place. Because uh, I guess there's debate on whether the cavalry had uh, colors uh, with the battalions, so you can decide for yourselves. But the idea here is that um, there's more commanders than you need when you get all three frames and start building out their brigades. There's more commanders than you need to fill up these ranks. So I've got an example here. Um, so you'll have more models at the end of the day than you'll actually be able to use. Now let's go look at the French Heavy Cavalry Brigade. This is the French Heavy Cavalry Brigade sprue similar to the light cavalry brigade sprue that we have the artillery piece in the upper left corner we have the guidons and we have, we have the guidons and we have the bugles right there so you can glue a bugle on the back of the bugler if you'd like so let's break these down so the, um, let's start with the carbiniers and you can tell by their headpiece right there and you've got uh, five soldiers and a leader right there. Then we'll go with the uh, cuirassiers, and you can tell them because they have their swords held upward. While the dragoons have their swords drawn in um, at the point. Uh, the headgear between the cuirassiers and the dragoons is the same, so the way they make them distinctive is how they hold uh, the sword. So that's what you get when you spend your $145 before shipping and handling uh, for the Waterloo campaign, the French starter army. Overall, uh, very good buy. Now this set is targeted to buyers like me. So I had nothing Napoleonic. Um, I had no pre-existing scales or rules. This is if you're looking to get into Napoleonics, this is the set to say, okay, I want to drop in, what do you have for me? So since I was looking to get into Napoleonic Warfare, and for some reason 28mm black powder didn't catch my interest, but moving to a smaller scale, where I originally started off, 
Um, and these figures fit in pretty well with the 15 millimeter and the 12 millimeter scale. They'll cheat the eye. Remember, it's all about basing here. Um, this is the set I was looking for. So I was planning on getting into Napoleonics when I turned 50. Since, you know, you start World War II when you're 40 and Napoleonics when you're 50. So the older you get, the farther you go back. But this set seemed like such a value. And... Uh, it seemed to have, be all-inclusive and ready to go out the box and not, very uh, low learning curve there. That's why I went for uh, this set. Uh, so very happy with it. And I hope if you're looking to try out Napoleonics, uh, try starting here. It seems like a good uh, entry point into the uh, setting, the theme, and the armies. Well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. We'll see you next time.